Rachel! I've missed you all so. This is Illbleed. Illbleed is a horror game that came out in 2001 and was exclusive to the Dreamcast, which is why you probably haven't heard much about it. This game is different to say the least. Jimmy, it's time for practice! Get out to the training field now! Nothing in it makes any sense. The writing is completely batshit and it's pretty much the video game equivalent of Haosu. This is one of those games where it's riddled with flaws, but you can't really see them because the game is just too damn charming. You don't even really consider the flaws, they're just quirks. Quirks of a quirky game. The story begins with our protagonist Eriko as she relives some childhood trauma in front of her school. My family ran what we called a horror caravan. Ah! <laughs> no! No! I think I might major in child psychology. Before her friends offer her tickets to a mysterious horror theme park that promises $1 million, or $100 million, the amount keeps changing, to anyone that can get through it alive. She declines. Her friends go without her, they disappear, and she goes in to find them three days later. Excuse me, did you see three high school kids around here? <coughs> what? This is where the game begins. Here is your hub area with shops in a cinema zone where you can start the next level. Each level in Illbleed is vaguely based on some kind of horror movie or trope. Here you have The Shining, Tremors, not sure about this one, Dawn of the Dead, Pepsi Man, and Toy Story. No, I'm not joking. These levels are self-contained. They have their own plots and they don't really have anything to do with the main story besides the fact that one of your friends is trapped in them. I mean, they are only theme park attractions, after all. It's difficult to really explain the stories of Illbleed. They usually start out making sense, he tracked down the kids responsible for the fire and killed them one by one with a blowtorch. So then quickly just go ape shit and stop making sense. One moment you're investigating a serial killer who has killed a handful of people, and the next you're navigating a gigantic maze filled with corpses. Oh, and do yourself a favor, look up a guide for the maze. I'm not fucking around. This is the worst maze I've ever seen in a video game. You can't even do the hug the left wall trick because there's multiple levels and sometimes you have to drop off or jump up to continue. Also, it's massive. It's fucking bullshit. Don't fuck around. Just get a guide. The gameplay consists of entering these theme parks, usually saving your friend, solving the mystery, that giant worm is Rachel, beating the boss and leaving. If you save your friend, you get to play as them. If you don't save any friends, something special happens. However, if you start the game without having any idea of what to do, it will probably look like this. What just happened? Turns out you were supposed to grab the horror monitor, an item which allows you to find traps and scares in the amusement park. At the top of your screen you have four sensors, sight, sound, smell and sixth sense. The first three are used to locate traps or jump scares, while the last one is used to locate enemies or items. Using the horror monitor, you can spend adrenaline to tag these traps. If you are right, the trap doesn't trigger and you get your adrenaline back. Cool. If you are wrong, you lose the adrenaline. You run out of adrenaline and you can't tag traps anymore, can't tag traps anymore and you're as good as dead. <laughs> At the start of the level, it doesn't tell you where the horror monitor is, besides some hints. And our friends at Crazy Games like to hide it amongst other traps which you can't defuse yet. The traps in this game can be anything. Trap doors, TV sets, sentient advertising, and a bunch of other crap. Pretty much anything in this game can come to life and attack you or scare you. It's a shame that when you successfully disarm a trap, you don't get to see what happens, because these animations can be pretty entertaining. Traps might damage your health, cause you to start bleeding, or increase your heart rate. If your health gets to zero, this happens. If your bleeding bar fills up, this happens, and if your pulse gets too high, this happens. Combat is where the game really starts to fall apart. The combat controls are very similar to the tank controls of the old Resident Evil games, except in Illbleed, all the enemies are fast and will kick your shit in. That is, until you realise this little backstep or dodge that you do with the B button gives you iframes. And they're really generous with those iframes. The only drawback to this is that every time you dodge, you raise your pulse a little bit. But that's not really an issue for reasons I'll get into later. Hitting enemies can be pretty difficult depending on which weapon you have. You can also try to escape. I'm fucking dead, dude. I'm fucking dead, dude. I'm fucking dead. Yeah, it's just nothing I. Now, how exactly do you think you escape from a fight in Elbleed? Do you A. try to run away? 
B? Try to hide in a closet or something? Did you guess A or B? Well... No! You call down a rope ladder from a helicopter above you and get lifted out. I mean, just look at this shit! Also, you really eat it if you get hit in this game. Blood goes everywhere and you usually just get knocked to the floor where they will just keep wailing on you. This game is not balanced. After the first level, you can get a cash prize according to how well you did. As long as you didn't completely eat shit, you can buy enough items to invalidate any difficulty in the next level. The levels already give you items, the fuck? but you can buy items to heal your health, your blood loss, and calm you down by the truckload. This doesn't really become a survival horror game at all. Don't forget to buy items in your suite. If you get injured, you can just heal yourself up about 8 times over, and if you keep falling for traps, you can listen to a relaxation CD. You can spend money on upgrading characters too, but even if you do that, you'll still have bags of money left over, and upgrading doesn't really seem too useful anyway. The only caveat is that you can't use items during fights, and the game can jump you at times with fights that you weren't expecting. Imagination is the essence of- The music and sound in Illbly varies. Most of the music is just ambience, with most of the game sounding like this. The sound of your heartbeat, the horror monitor and footsteps can get a little bit old. The combat music isn't much better either. However, there are some tracks that stand out. Illbleed is slow. The need to be careful and spot traps means you need to take your time. But if you take too long to finish the level, you get less money and it's even possible for your friend to perish. Visually, Illbleed looks nice. The art is colourful and wacky and everything is pretty appealing to the eye. While it's no Shenmue, it's a decent looking game for the Dreamcast. My only complaint would be the lack of any facial animations whatsoever on the main characters. I use the money for a chainsaw and hack my way into fame and fear. Their faces don't move at all. Like even an O face or when they get spooked would have helped a lot. They look like mannequins or, or action figures. As for the horror elements, I didn't really find the game scary at all, but there are some moments in the game which can put you on edge. Namely, there's several points in the game where you have to run through a maze while being chased by something. The first level has Bane Ballow who can exist in two places at once. Another level turns you into a wooden puppet and makes you run from lumberjacks until you realise that being a wooden puppet is pretty awesome. These moments can quickly stop being stressful, particularly after the first level, however the final level is easily the creepiest of them all. It's not scary, it's just... Uh, unsettling. It's a, it's a parody of Toy Story, but involves such concepts as toy hell, normal hell and child murder. I can't really say much without spoiling it, but I think it's way more unsettling than anything else the game has shown so far. Also, discount Woody's girlfriend's name in this isn't Little Bo Peep, it's Sexy Doll. Another thing I don't really understand about the Toy Story level is that it seems to be a tutorial level, but it's at the end of the game. It's the easiest level out of all of them, and it teaches you how to play, but it's after all the hard levels, and it's right at the end of the game. Oh, and you know that Pepsi Man level I talked to you about earlier? Well, that takes place outside of the amusement park, like there's murders happening behind the scenes in the amusement park, like not in the attractions. But then it is kind of part of the attractions, and the attractions are killing people, but they don't care about that. Nothing in this game makes any sense, just sit down and eat your popcorn. Despite being completely unbalanced and riddled with flaws, I would absolutely recommend you to try to find and play this game. If you don't have a Dreamcast, you can buy the game and try to emulate it. Redream runs the game with no issues, and it was what I used to record this footage, as I don't have a suitable capture card for my Dreamcast. Finding a copy can be pretty pricey, so maybe try to learn Japanese or something. As for the company that made this, Crazy Games was shut down due to a downturn in the Japanese economy, and the creator of Illbleed, Shinya Nishigaki, passed away not long after. There was an expanded Xbox port planned, but it never met the light of day. It's a shame because I've never found any other game like it'll bleed. The gameplay style, the zany Japanese takes on American B-movies, the atrocious voice acting, it's all just so lovably kooky. I don't really mean to sound nostalgic, but you can tell it's a relic from an era where companies could largely do what they want with their games. You can tell no publisher had a hand in this. So that's Illbly, Michael Reynolds' Virtual Horror Land, an uncut gem hidden in the Dreamcast library like a diamond in an African coal mine. 
Unlike African diamonds, however, Ill Bleed does not destabilize any nation states, it just idles in obscurity and is not really talked about at all. In the future, I hope to find some more obscure games from the bowels of video game history to cover. And yes, a lot of them are from the Dreamcast library. So until next time. Thank you.